somewhere I am a bit um, weary of the end of the month because I always choose gosh, guys I don't know why I do this I always write about the hardest subjects that there are to write I don't make it easy on myself I'm like oh, I can write about this and then I'm just like why on earth did I choose to write about this this is like impossibly hard to write about so just pray that everything goes well today that I can come back do my stuff and then by tomorrow finish all my work for January We're still in January right yes and yes we'll go from there it is very cold outside I'm gonna turn on the heater put on music or a podcast or something and get on the road let's go okay I made it. <laughs> I got lost because I think you wrote the wrong apart not apartment number, the wrong building number. Oh, gosh, you guys don't you guys have no idea how cold it is outside. I was sitting in a parked car and the car was like swaying like this. So it was it's very windy outside, but I hope that's not going to affect any audio in the building inside of his house. So if not, I'm actually surrounded by like it's like close to territories and stuff, so it can be considered a bit dangerous, but like, I made it. Shalom friends, welcome to Kosher Cooking with Jonathan. Salam Dustan to all my friends in Iran. Hassam Soleimani was killed, targeted by a US airstrike in Iraq, and Iranians today mock him because his body was left like fried meat. Just as I added the flour to bind it together along with the eggs. I don't want too much liquid with the onion, so now we're putting all the onion in. Sound good and they smell delicious. Ooh, look at that. Iran, we stand in solidarity with you. We love your food. We're praying for peace, and we're praying that this is the last February 11th that anyone on earth will ever celebrate the Islamic Revolution. I'm at Jonathan and Lori's house in the beautiful Ifrat. Jonathan just made kotlet, which is a Persian one. A Persian meat and potato patty. Fried. Yummy. Fried. And it looks super yummy. And we just made the cooking show, and now we're gonna feast our faces. Here you go. Yummy. Look at that. So crunchy. Mmm. Very yummy. You know what it needs? Salt. Thank you. <laughs> We're not going to tell anyone that. <laughs> well, you're vlogging it now. <laughs> Oops. But it's great. The flavors are great. Good film. Good filming. <laughs> so, we're done. You probably can't hear me with all the wind. But I got a book. This is the book that um, I did a promo video for Jonathan, and uh, he just gave it to me as a gift. I'm very happy. I'm gonna go home now. I might need to go grocery shopping first. It's a it's a beautiful day because it's very clear and very cloudy, but it is deceiving, deceivingly cold because of the wind. So I think I'm actually going to, where am I going? Stop at the mall. Um, maybe to buy a few things, maybe not. But also I like checking like uh, other places, how they look like. Uh, Ifrat is mainly a religious place, 
I don't know if Orthodox, but it's mainly religious. So that's what it does. So this is Nitzata du Divan. It's like a whole bunch of like organic stuff. And then this is a regular a regular shopping place. It smells like licorice, gosh. Gosh, this is so pleasant. They even have like nice pleasant music in the background. So I'm not going to get a lot of things. I'm just gonna get eggs, tomatoes, and cucumbers. That's it. And uh, I mix the Yehud um, where my grandpa and his wife live. We're trying to figure out the um, smart way of shopping now that you basically take one of these things and you connect it to your grocery cart and then you sort of pay on the spot. We've never tried it so we feel very inadequate. We're at a grocery shop. I love grocery shops that it feels like you're an adult but uh, this place is huge. It's huge. for some kind of yummy uh, chocolate snack something for my grandpa. This is, I think he's turning 87, which is quite old. אני אוהבת כאילו שאנשים יודעים איך לטפל בצמחים, כי אני לא יודעת איך לטפל בצמחים. for the first time in a long time that the city is officially full. <laughs> I think every single vlog I've been saying the city is so empty, the city is so empty um, because of the war things have been like that um, but also now because of the cold but today is a Thursday 
um, people are out despite the cold. When I tell you it's cold, like I have thermos clothes beneath me, like underneath my clothes, and I'm still cold. I'm just looking forward to ending my work week. I've tried very hard to meet my deadlines. It's the 1st of February, and uh, I just want to be outside a bit in the city and enjoy my time. There she is! Oh, <laughs> Oh, oh hi! <laughs> it's just time of fun. Uh, like we, there's a place called Babette, which is a waffle place that's there. Literally, it's like a hole in the wall. Since I was a kid, since I remember being here, and they closed it. Pizza. <laughs> pizza. my pizza. Wow, you were saying that everything like changes all the time, yeah. I, I wasn't here in Jerusalem City for about I would say. Yeah, or something like that. Wow. A lot has been changed. A lot. Um, and all the time. You know, also after Corona, but also like now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this, this city is ever, ever changing. But we are heading to Nadi's. We're heading to Nadi. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully if it's open. And uh, we're just going to see if there's a, a space for us. And if not, we're just going to... Keep on searching. Oh, it's cold. On a cold, cold night. On a cold, cold, on a cold, cold night. <laughs> Here's Nandi's. Something chocolate, something nice something and warm, sweet. something sweet. And uh, we are on Ben Yehuda. Yes. Uh, for those of you who don't know, if you're new here in the vlog, uh, I used to live on Ben Yehuda. I used to live all the way up the top, but the, this was literally my street. This was my street. I lived here. It's my street. <laughs> It's so hot on the inside. The city is a vibe tonight. They're singing Louis Capaldi. All right, here's another honest conversation. Conversation time with Oriel. I always refrain from talking about certain things about my past because I guess I feel vulnerable, but also it involves people and I'm not a gossiper. But I also want to be able to tell my story when I want to tell it without feeling obligated towards people that felt no obligation to protect my heart. I used to live over there where I'm going to show you right now. That's the supermarket that I would sometimes go to as a 24-6 and up there is where I used to live. And so And so during that time, I had, um, was in a relationship and that person treated me for a long, long time very, very, very badly. And I did not have the self-worth or the self-love to leave. And I loved this person with everything in me and I believed in him and his ability to 
to change and I forgave him over and over and over and over and over again and um, eventually it thank God fell apart um, because I don't think I had the strength to leave because I loved him so much and so I hate admitting it out loud I think because I hate the fact that I used to love that person for a long time after that breakup um, going next to my old apartment which was the apartment I had during that relationship it was very traumatic it was it just gave me all the worst PTSD heartbeat feelings in the world um, because I suffered a lot of trauma during that time after years I have overcome and I don't feel those things anymore if you are in a place in life in which certain physical places in a city, in a town, wherever, whatever, reminds you for the worst of someone else, of a bad time in your life, I suggest slowly but surely overcoming it by going to those places on purpose. So what I had to do one time is that there were two entrances to where I used to live. One was on the main, uh, main road of Benuda, and the other one was sort of like behind in an alleyway and I would always feel very um, just sort of grossed out crossing by there I had to deliberately go to the alleyway in which I used to come into my house from the from the back door and just look up at my balcony look up at the old ba balcony look at where we used to sit and the things that he hung up for me and uh, where I used to put out my laundry and all of the n the somewhat normal memories that became extremely, extremely bitter for me. Um, I had to look them in the eyes and say, you don't control me. And you don't, what you did to me doesn't get to determine who I am or what I'm going to be moving forward. And so I had to do that in different ways with a lot of things and with a lot of places because you know, you live your life in the city with a person, you go to a lot of places and all those places suddenly remind you of bad things. And so what I'm saying is, even though it's hard to confront things, go with someone, but do it, do it. Don't let that thing forever hold this bad, you know, this be this cloud of this dark cloud over your head or have, leave you with a bitter taste in your mouth like don't let them have that control over you don't let the trauma have that control over you do what you can to heal and I promise you you will conquer every single tiny place it doesn't mean that you have to do it every single time but every single time that you choose to do it you will feel better and you'll come out a conqueror and so I encourage you if you can to try and do that that's my spiel uh, I'm going to end the vlog here oh, it's raining <laughs> I'm gonna end the vlog here in uh, rainy Jerusalem waiting for my train but I wanted to say uh, I appreciate all of you that have been here for at least two something years you guys are amazing I'm sorry if I didn't get to your messages or your comments in the latest video um, if you're new here then welcome feel free to subscribe in this channel you are welcome please comment let me know that you're new here and um, if you're not new here then welcome back I love you and I'll see you guys in a vlog very, very soon.